Hello, I'm Professor Stephen Abbott. Welcome to the updated tutorials using HSPIP 5.4th edition. We've seen how to measure the HSPs of things like polylactic acid, but suppose you have an unknown compound and you want to estimate it. Well, of course, we can do that using the DIY do-it-yourself option. And the best way to do it is via the YMB, Yamamoto Molecular Breaking Technique. We enter a smiles, in this case CCO, two carbons and an oxygen, which is ethanol. I hit calculate, and it gives us the molecular structure of ethanol, which is useful. And it tells us that the estimate is 15.6, 9.3, 17.2. It checks the database for this ethyl and OH group and finds that the real values are 15.8, not so bad, 8.8, .8, not so bad, 19.4, maybe a bit low. But that's how you can get an instant estimate. We can load 3D structures, for example, capsaicin as a mole file. There it is. That's what gives chili its hot taste. But suppose we don't know the smiles or don't have a mole file. No problem. We go to something like ChemSpider and I search for paracetamol and it tells me that here's the smiles. I copy the smiles, I go back to here, I paste the smiles, hit calculate, and there's paracetamol. And again, we have the official values and we have the calculated values. In this case, the DD is much too high, but that's the nature of estimates. Always the best values are the ones you measure. Estimates are only there for convenience. We can do all these things one by one, but suppose we have a whole list of compounds. Well, we put them into a file with the name and the smiles tab separated, and we load that file, in this case, F check test, why not? And it, in this case, went through seven items and converted them to the HSDX format, which is one of the standard formats, SOFX, which is a solvent optimizer format, and also the full data with all the estimated values. Because when you do YMB, you get the Antoine coefficients of vapor pressures and relative evaporation rates and all sorts of things automatically. And you can choose to ignore them or you can use them for your own data. Let's just do CCO again. There is the molecule and as I said, get a large number of estimates. These are put on the clipboard for your convenience. So if I load Excel and I do control V to paste, there are all the data. That's without a header. So let's turn on the header and recalculate. Now do it again. Now we have the header and all the values stretching across a large range. So this is a powerful way of estimating HSPs, but also other parameters. We can do more than just estimate HSPs of molecules. We can do it with polymers. Polymers are represented by polymer smiles, where the X shows where the units are connected. So polyethylene is just carbon-carbon joined in chains via these X's. Let's say we wanted a copolymer of polyethylene and polyvinyl alcohol. To make EVOH, we call the blend. And let's say we want 60, 40 PE, PVOH. Calculate it. And there we have the estimated HSP of this particular EVOH. So the polymers are very powerful. Let's talk about azeotropes. Let's try ethanol and ethyl acetate. CC Gavond O, OCC. See what happens. And we have a complicated plot showing temperatures and mole fractions. 
but it estimates that there's an azeotrope at 45% mole fraction. So a powerful way of looking at solvent blends. What about miscibility? Well, I will try ethanol again, CCO, and heptane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it does a complex calculation of the temperature effects. So at very low ratios, or very high ratios, they're miscible. But in intermediate ratios, they're calculated as being immiscible. Now, as it happens, methanol is miscible with almost every normal solvent. So in the database, ethanol and heptane are miscible. And this shows one of the sad truths of solubility theory, not just HSP, that it's difficult to predict miscibility. So although it's pretty obvious that ethanol and heptane should be immiscible, in reality they are miscible. But at least you have the chance to explore these with calculations.